Hey everybody, today I'll be your coach and it is my job to help you get better. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Come on, pass it over here. Uh, gently, gently. Ooh. Run faster, run faster. Uh, jump, jump higher. Ugh. I don't think I'm a very good coach, but you know who is a good coach? Jesus. Because when we spend time with Jesus, we get better. Our Bible story today comes from Luke 10, at the very end of the chapter, starting in verse 38. As Jesus and his disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Now picture this for a minute. These are some of Jesus' friends, and the woman who owns the home is named Martha. I wonder what a home back then would have looked like. They were probably pretty small compared to our homes today, with not lots of bedrooms and lots of bathrooms and big old kitchens. Everyone probably would have been squeezed in pretty tight. And Martha opens her door and welcomes Jesus in. So picture Jesus and all of the disciples that were following him coming into the home, squeezing their way in, and Martha's really excited about Jesus coming. Let's see what happens next. Her sister, Mary, sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. Now let's picture that for a minute. Mar Martha has a sister named Mary. Now, because it was Martha's home, that gives us a hint that Martha was probably the older sister. How many of you are the older brother or sister? Yep, I'm an older sister too. Being the older sister means you have a lot of responsibility. If you're the older brother or sister, you kind of watch out for everybody, don't you? Yeah, you end up doing a lot of things around the house, watching over everybody. Now, how many of you are the younger brother or sister? Okay, you have a lot of things to do too. You have to always play second to the older brother or sister, right? Yeah, you're always having to wait in line behind the older brother or sister. It's hard being the second. So that's what you've got with Mary and Martha happening right now. It's Martha's house. She's in charge. She's welcoming Jesus in. And Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to what he's going to teach. I wonder what's going through their heads at this point. I bet Martha's really excited. I bet she has some wonderful things cooking on her stove, waiting for Jesus to eat them. I bet she's got a plan. I bet she's cooked her very best recipe. What's your favorite thing to eat? If Jesus was coming to your house, what would you feed him? Pizza? Spaghetti? Hamburgers? Right? She's probably got her favorite meal to feed Jesus. Now I wonder what's going through Mary's head right now. She's probably really excited to hear Jesus teach. If you could hear Jesus teach, what do you think he would say? What question would you ask Jesus if you could ask him anything? Imagine that, Jesus, who knows everything in the whole universe, and you get to sit right next to him and listen to him talk? What does his voice sound like? You get to ask him anything and he answers it. That's pretty amazing. Mary must have been just full of so many questions and excitement getting to hear Jesus. Okay, let's dig back in. Verse 40 says that Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. See, I told you she was making a meal. Lots of hamburgers to make. Just kidding, she wasn't making hamburgers. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. Now, what would Jesus do in this situation? Here he's got these two sisters. Martha has welcomed him into her home. She's got this big meal that she's prepared, something that smells amazingly delicious, and she's worked really hard to prepare all of this for Jesus. And here's Mary sitting there eagerly waiting for everything that Jesus is going to tell her. And Martha is pretty upset that Mary is not helping. And so she calls Mary out and says, Jesus, tell her to help me. 
what would Jesus do in this situation? Hmm. Let's find out. Verse 41. The Lord said to her, My dear Martha. Don't you love how Jesus answers so gently? My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. Now that's a pretty interesting answer, don't you think? Here's what happened. Jesus makes his friends better. Jesus helps his friends be better. Martha and Mary were Jesus's close, some of Jesus' closest friends, like some of his best, best friends. And here he has this very interesting situation. And he answers and helps them be better. My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. He speaks right to the heart of Martha. And he says, there is only one thing worth being concerned about. See, if you're an older brother or sister, you're probably worried about a lot of details in your life. You have a lot of responsibilities and a lot of things to do. Jesus helped her be better. He said, you're worried about a lot of details, but there's only one thing to be concerned about. She was worried about all the cooking, probably worried about all the cleaning, probably worried about fitting all of those dirty, stinky disciples in her house. But the only thing she really needed to be worried about was being with Jesus. He's the most important. And he was helping her to see that. He was helping his friends be better. Then he helped Mary too. He says, Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. Mary had lived her whole life being the second sibling, the younger sibling. And she probably had to like follow behind Martha all the time and do what Martha said all the time and worry about what Martha needed done all the time. And she had this opportunity to sit with Jesus and was so excited to hear what he had to say. And she was not going to miss it. And Jesus spoke to her heart and he helped her be better and said it was not going to be taken away from her. He spoke to her heart and helped her be better and showed her that she was right and helped see her for who she was and helped bring her out to the forefront. And he didn't make her second. So se younger siblings, you're not second to Jesus. You don't have to worry about not being seen. Jesus helped his friends be better. So what would Jesus do when he's confronted with a hard situation, when siblings are fighting and there's conflict? Jesus helps his friends be better. Oh no, the film crew's on their way. I can see them coming. I've got to hurry up and clean up my mess. What should I do? I know, I'll scurry funge. Wait, you don't know what a scurry funge is? Let me show you. Wow, that's a scurry funge. The film crew is here and now we're ready. So you got to witness me scurry funging around trying to clean up before they got here. And just in case you didn't know, a scurry funge is when you hastily tidy up your home, room, whatever you want it to be in a big hurry when you see a friend or a family member is coming over and you want your house to look nice or your place to look nice. It's an old English word. We don't use it anymore, but we do it all the time. And in fact, my wife and I often will hurry up to clean up our house. We'll get the kids involved, even the dog, make the dog pick up her toys. We get the whole family involved trying to clean up the house when a friend or family or before a holiday or whatever, before they come over and Really, for what? They already like us. They're already our friends and family. We don't really have to impress them. Now, granted, it does make it look a little nicer, but then at the end, we're all stressed out. In our story today, we had a scurry funge. Martha decided to try to frantically clean up the house before and even during the time that Jesus 
was right there with her. And her sister Mary took the time to spend it with Jesus because she understood that all that Jesus wanted was to be with his friends and spend time. So how often do we try to get our lives in order for our friends or our family when really they already love us, they already care, and they're not going to be any more impressed with us that we have our, our business in order, right? They already love us. Jesus loves you, and he wants to be your friend. In fact, he is your friend. Jesus makes his friends better, and the way he does that is he spends time with his friends. He spent time with Mary in our story today. Martha, he called her attention to the fact that she was too busy trying to impress him. She wanted to get everything in order and looked at her sister as if she wasn't doing the right thing. Jesus makes his friends better, and he wants to spend time with you, his friend. When you do this, when you spend time with Jesus, you will notice certain things happen you'll feel more trusting. You'll believe that he's in control and that he's guiding you. You'll feel a sense of peace. You won't feel like everything is so chaotic and like you're having to rush around and get everything together. You can feel that you can take the time and be at peace with him and grow with Jesus. Spend time in the Word, spend time in your Bible, and listen to the great things He wants to share with you. Jesus helped His friends be better, and He wants to help you, because you are His friend. All right, guys, so let's see if you got a little bit better from today's lesson. Let's see what you remember. Which sister was doing all of the work? Was it Martha or Mary? Give you a second to answer. That's right, it's Martha. The second question is, what chore was Martha doing? Was she making the beds? Was she cooking dinner? Or was she washing clothes? Was she making beds, cooking dinner, or washing clothes? Give you a second to answer. That's right, she was cooking dinner. The last question is, what is the one thing that is the most important? Do you remember it? It was spending time with Jesus, because spending time with Jesus makes us better. Strolling through this life, Watching every step Someone with us can be a friend And that's a benefit But walking out the long road I don't understand Trying here to up my game Call the one who has a plan I'm strolling with the big guy I'm walking in the light I'm strolling with the big guy The one who gave us life I'm strolling with the big guy I'm walking in the light I'm strolling with the big guy The one who gave us life Wanna go to land Not turning left or right The one who's holding on to me Is in this thing for life I can hear the whisper And feel the guiding hand I feel the spirit showing My G-O-D He 
strolling with me He's a big guy It's reality He's a P-I-G G-O-D He's strolling with me He's a big guy Say it like you mean it Who gave us life? I'm strolling with the big guy.